Hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome to the vlog. And I am just gonna jump into it with something that's absolutely amazing. Look at this right here. Mangrove, number three, laid 4 8 19. That's over three months ago. And guess what, guys? There they are! Oh my gosh, that's right, some little venomous mangrove snakes. These guys are unbelievable. Oh my god, these are little Boego dendrophilia. Absolutely incredible. One of my favorite snakes, as a matter of fact, in a minute we'll go down and show you the mama. She is incredible, and when it comes to venom, these guys are mildly venomous. At this size, there's nothing to worry about at all because they are rear fang venomous, and there'd be no way that they could even puncture my skin. They don't actually inject venom like a normal venomous snake. It's kind of like little slots in their rear fangs that actually drip venom in. So they have to really not only bite you, but they have to actually kind of chew on you to get any venom in. And even if that happens, the venom isn't really potent or anything like that. I mean, it basically might get you a little bit nauseous, a little swelling, a little tingling, stuff like that, a little bit of pain, nothing too major. But nevertheless, hatching these guys is an absolute beauty and I am so excited. When this mama laid her clutch of eggs, I knew it was gonna be a long journey. Again, over three months of incubation. Now this is the third or fourth time we've ever produced a little baby mangroves and they turn jet black just like I'm going to show the mama in a little bit with yellow bands unbelievable these guys have little red dots on them a little bit oh doggy I tell you what these are wonderful just take a look at these and the thing I like about this particular one is that the bands don't go all the way around oftentimes the bands are all the way around these guys but this particular line actually has kind of black on the back whoo I tell you what that is absolutely stunning just look at this little monkey right there Oh my God. I tell you what guys, I get excited about almost every snake I hatch, but I am extra excited today to hatch these guys out. Man, what an accomplishment. I am so excited. And again, we'll see what other colubrids we have hatching. Oh, look at this little guy. Look at this guy. Oh my gosh, look at him. Oh, there you go. It's not often times that you want to get bit by a venomous snake, that's for sure. <laughs> there you go, buddy. It's all right, it's okay, it's okay. Oh, look at him. Oh, ow. <laughs> so there it is. Again, no problem with that, but how awesome is that? Again, we have a handful of other colubrids that are hatching too, so let's just go ahead. This is actually a Halloween Pueblin milk snake clutch right here. Now, the Halloween Pueblins are that high orange that has almost like the yellow and black banding. A lot of times they don't have a lot of red, beautiful snakes. I mean, this particular one right here, whoo, that is a ripper right there. That's what you want when you're looking at Halloweens. Wow, these are absolutely beautiful and whoo, they are fast too. So I better go ahead and set that down really quick or I'm going to have snakes all over the place. <laughs> Let's go ahead and look and see what we have right here. Oh, these guys are just hatching out. This is actually a caramel motley. That was a possible head scaleless and it was bred to a motley scaleless. And right off the rip right here, we have a little albino scaleless, but there's a whole bunch of babies that are still in the egg right here this is oh that's really cool this actually looks like what they call a stonewash corn or hypo corn that's stonewash Woo! i didn't even know that that genetics was in that one that is incredible so again we're going to definitely have some scaleless because this one proved out to be a het scaleless which is awesome who knows what else is going to hatch from these eggs but it's going to be absolutely incredible just a couple more clutches here this is actually an apricot problem milk snake so much like the halloween problem it's an apricot but in this case these are just normal bangs banded Puebla milk snakes and wow these guys are absolutely gorgeous one of the prettiest non-venomous snakes I think again milk snakes just look at that swatch of court what Look at that swatch of snakes, and this little guy's getting away. Come on, little monkey, get in there, little dude. I tell you what, when these guys fire up, uh, they'll be all over the place. I definitely gonna put the thing on, and then lastly, what do we have here? Okay, we actually have just a bunch of normal corn snakes right here that actually are het for scaleless. Oh my gosh, look at how beautiful. And I tell you what, one of the first snakes that I ever hatched as a, a young kid was actually a normal clutch of corn snakes just like this. But of course, these are het for scaleless, so woo! I tell you what, love hatch season. It's getting amazing. Oh, I'm gonna be in trouble here. Let me set my camera down for one second, make sure that my lid's on here. Like I always say, check, make sure no heads are in there. So that's it for hatching. Let's go check Mama Mangrove out. And guys, take a look. This is the mama to that clutch right here. And she could see that she has that unbelievably beautiful pattern where it's kind of lacking on the other side. Come on. Definitely don't want to get bit by her again. You know, I have been nipped by these guys a handful of times, but they can be a little tricky, that is for sure. And uh, she's already not in a good mood at all. And uh, again, you know, a very mild venom. So it's not like I'm taking any risks or anything like that. But Mama is definitely not in a good mood. You can see she's still in really good shape. The thing that's really interesting about this is that that clutch, that hatch, 
just now was actually laid again three months ago and she just laid another clutch of eggs and we actually didn't even have a male in with her believe it or not so she retained sperm for three months and then laid another clutch of eggs what a ripper this animal is Woo! That's okay, you guys. Look at how beautiful. I tell you what, I love mangrove snakes. A snake I've been wanting to breed and produce for a long, long time. Woo, woo. Okay, and again, I definitely don't want to take a pop with this girl, so I should probably put her back, but I want to just show off how absolutely gorgeous she is. There you go, mama, get back in there. Woo, I tell you what. What a wonderful snake and a beautiful clutch of eggs just hatched. I tell you what guys, we hatched out that clutch that was the spider bread to a pastel bamboo vanilla woma. Oh my God, they came out of the egg quick. We literally just got them like a day and a half ago. They all are out. Some crazy stuff. Just, just to start with, I'm gonna start really simple with you guys right here. This is actually just a vanilla spider ball python. So it's just a double gene. You know, it's got the vanilla, which of course can have a super vanilla, and then the spider. Unbelievable. This is actually the same animal, but a vanilla woma ball python. So this is the other kind of reduction of pattern that comes out. Again, spiders and womas are a little bit similar, have a little bit different pattern to them, but they're both like reducers when it comes to things. But then we start getting crazy, guys. So I'm gonna jump into these little guys right here these three little monkeys right here and these two in particular they are definitely bumblebee vanillas so essentially it's a pastel it's a vanilla and it's a spider this one too looks like it's probably a pastel vanilla spider too but man i tell you what the kind of crazy blushing in it i don't know i have a feeling that there's another gene that was floating around and one of either the mom or the dad i'm not sure because you could see the three of these they look similar but this one right here definitely looks a lot more blushing out almost like there's mojave in it but i know there's not mojave in this because bamboo and mojave would be white snakes those are blue-eyed leucistic complex animals so that can't be the case i don't know what it is i'm not 100 sure but it's absolutely incredible then we're going to get on to these two little monkeys right here these are the exact mutation is the dad which is a pastel a bamboo a vanilla and a woma so that's what these guys are here and hoo hoo doggy i tell you what i love them the bamboo stuff is so incredible so it's so exciting to be producing these guys i love love these ones but then it goes crazy guys there are two animals in here that just blew my mind <laughs> doggy these things are insane these guys are the all gene animals so the dead was a pastel bamboo woma vanilla these are that and then you add the spider gene and oh my god the reduction in pattern here is ridiculous these guys almost look like they have clown in them they're so reduced in the dorsal pattern on them i tell you what these are incredible as a matter of fact right now i'm going to sex these to decide what i'm going to do with them this one here is a male Oh my gosh, I definitely am keeping this one. This one isn't going for sale, guys. I hate to tell you that. And I tell you what, if this is a female, I'll probably keep her too. Oh, it's another male. Now the hard decision, right? And that's the decision I'm always struggling with. Do I keep both males? Do I keep one male and sell a male? Uh, the truth is I wanna keep everything. And I tell you what, these guys here, let's go ahead and check the sex on these two. Cause if these are females, I'm gonna keep these as well. Okay, this is a male here. So I probably don't need another male of that one. And this is a female right here. So I don't know, I'll probably keep these three animals right here. The two male, all genes, and then the one female. Oh my gosh, I don't know. Maybe I'll just keep the whole clutch. I'm not 100% not sure but nevertheless that clutch out out and absolutely was bonkers You might ask why we were packing everything up. Well, I'm pretty excited today because there is a minor league baseball team that is in our area and they asked us to come out and have a Reptarium Day. That's right, so today is actually Reptarium Day at the ballpark. There's about 5,000 people that actually show up for each of the games. So we're gonna go and just kind of introduce them to a bunch of cool animals. It's gonna be amazing. And uh, guess what? The word on the street is that myself and Sunrise are gonna throw out the first pitch of the game. That's right, the first time that I've ever thrown out a first pitch, maybe uh, during Little League when I was a little kid. So. I I am pretty excited about it. so let's go ahead back up it's literally a mile down the road an amazing stadium it's going to be an amazing time and we're going to be able to reach a lot of people with these cool animals so we made it here to the ballpark that's right jimmy john's field it's going to be amazing it's going to set up our animals we have about an hour before the gates open it's going to be thousands of people absolutely bonkers but i cannot wait we're out here on the field Give you an idea what the stadium looks like. Again, it's just a minor league thing, but there's, uh, I think it's like 4,500 people show up every day. So this is gonna be awesome uh, out there at the pitching mound. Uh, hopefully I don't throw that ball into the dirt, but uh, how awesome is this? 
Oh my God, we're having a great time already. And we are uh, open here at the stadium, and uh, yeah, lots of people filtering in. It's gonna be amazing. The kids are loving it, I'm loving it, the crew is loving it. It's gonna be a great, great day. Probably a good half hour into this event. People have just been crowding, loving it. I'm gonna be honest with you, my arms are wore out because I've been shrugging sunrise up and down all over the place, but uh, it's, it's a great time. I mean, to see parents and kids, this is the perfect area to do something like this because there's so many kids coming out to the ball game. So uh, we're gonna gear up in a few minutes and then we're gonna go throw this first pitch. And in the meantime, just continue to have a great time. Okay, I'm wore out. Yo, having this go up and down a million times is difficult, but heading over to throw out the first pitch. So uh, this ought to be good. Again, after being tired, I hope this goes well, but it's an amazing experience. I couldn't be happier. I'm on cloud nine. I didn't get it. The first time ever today, right? Representing Reptarium with Sunshine, Brian Barczyk. We did it! We made it to the catcher. We didn't throw it over or in the dirt, so I'll take that all the time. Let's go back and have some fun. And even after throwing out the first pitch and being gone for a half hour or so, there's still a huge crowd over here hanging out. This has been such a huge success and so much fun. I tell you, we're gonna hang out here for another hour or so. Then we head over uh, because the Reptarium is open tonight, so we gotta get ready to open the zoo. Finally wrapping up here at Jimmy John Stadium and we are heading back to the Reptarium. We're open up there and I'm actually feeding big snakes tonight while we're open. So uh, we've got rabbits thought out, Lucy, butterscotch, and Daisy all will be fed tonight. Here, we are about to feed Lucy and uh, hopefully it goes well. Looks like Lucy is ready to go, guys, so uh, wish me luck. We love you. Okay, thank you guys. You guys are so encouraging. We love you. <laughs> thank you. There we go. There she is. There she is. All right. She's amazing, right, guys? Okay, so this is going to take her about 20 minutes or so to eat. Then Chris is going to feed her another one. But we're going to feed in a minute. We're going to go feed butterscotch. And I'm going to do the best I can do to see if, if I toss her a rabbit, she'll actually catch it on the air, all right? All right, guys. All right, we're feeding butterscotch. Uh, we're gonna see if we can't do the throw in the air trick. Uh, let's see what happens. Sorry, you're ready. Sorry, you're ready. Here we go, here we go, here we go. There she goes. All right, there she goes. <laughs> <laughs> that worked out awesome. That was absolutely perfect. And like always, we like to have uh, friends that can feed the second time. Lucy is much more calm than the second rabbit. So my buddy Chris is in the house and I'm gonna let him go ahead. He has some snakes already, so he knows exactly what to do. So I'm just gonna kind of be an innocent bystander. Chris, I'm gonna be over here, so don't get me killed. And then come on in just all the way out, far out as you can. She's gonna come up right now. There she goes. She's coming. And in front of her face, back up just a hair. There it is. Good job. Whoa. This, yep. There she is. There you go. Oh, yeah. Good job, man. That's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> All right. It's just it's a great experience. Lucy is amazing. She's doing really well. So uh, I always love to kind of do this in front of the audience because it's really spectacular. I get to see these snakes eat all the time, and most people don't. So I want to share that with people, and it's absolutely amazing. We got just a little bit of time left here at the Rep Terrible. Been a long day, an exciting day. What an amazing thing we hatched out. Cool, venomous mangrove snakes. We got a chance to hang out with a bunch of people. I threw out a first pitch, and then ultimately got to feed a bunch of cool snakes in front of people. So I'd say that was an amazing day and I hope that you guys have an amazing day. I love your beautiful faces. Do me a favor and be kind to someone today and I promise I'll see you guys tomorrow.